This video is brought to you by NordPass. Oh, we're going? Hold on. Not sponsored, but if you haven't already, you gotta try these Trader Joe's mini ice cream cookies. Mmm, so good. Okay, before we get started, this is easily one of the most highly requested videos on the channel because Alfred is so powerful, it could probably walk your dog, do your laundry, and solve world hunger all at the same time. Well, it actually can't do any of those things, but you get the idea. So because of that, not only will we be going over how to get the most out of Alfred as an app, I'll also be giving away five $50 Power Pack licenses that'll unlock a ton of pro features for you within Alfred. If you want a chance to win one of those, just like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment letting me know your favorite Alfred feature. So with that, let's get to the video. So to get started, let's go ahead and get Alfred downloaded. There's two ways to do it. First is through the App Store, but don't do that because you're gonna be getting a classic legacy version and you'll be missing out on a ton of useful features, including the pro features that come with the Power Pack license. So let's open the browser, go to alfredapp.com and download it directly from here. And just to put any concerns about safety to rest, it is absolutely safe to download it outside of the App Store. I won't bore you with the details, but it's developer ID signed and notarized, meaning that every single update that's pushed by the development team is automatically checked by Apple ensuring that you're getting a trustworthy download. So with Alfred downloaded, let's take care of the first thing, which is disabling the keyboard shortcut that currently opens the Spotlight tool so that we can have that same shortcut open Alfred instead. So go ahead and hit Command Space to open the Spotlight tool. Type Keyboard and hit Enter to open the settings. Click Keyboard Settings, Keyboard Shortcuts, Spotlight from the left side menu here and uncheck both of these because we're gonna have the Alfred shortcut set to command space. Then let's come over here to desktop and dock. And if we scroll down under default browser settings, make sure you have the browser that you want as your default browser set here because this is the browser that Alfred will use for any type of web searching. Now that we're done there, let's type the default Alfred shortcut, which is option space, type Alfred and hit enter to open the preferences. Click on the Alfred hotkey box here and type command space to set that as the default shortcut moving forward. So now that we have the shortcut set up, let's go over a few of the most commonly used Alfred commands. First, you can type command space to launch Alfred, which essentially allows you to do anything internally on your Mac that you would have done with the Spotlight tool. Some examples are opening any app that you want or running system processes like putting your Mac to sleep and emptying the trash. Although by typing command space to launch Alfred, you can search for things externally as well. And this is one of the main things that separates Alfred from Spotlight. For example, you can quickly search for things on Google, find products on Amazon, or you know, if you feel like it, you can search for my channel directly on YouTube to like and subscribe. Second, you can type command space followed by another space to open any file that you already know the name of. Third, by typing command space followed by a keyword, which we'll walk through how to set up custom keywords in a little bit, you can reduce how much you need to type to do certain things, like typing A instead of Amazon, G instead of Google, and YT instead of YouTube. And finally, we can start customizing the Alfred preferences by typing command space followed by Alfred and enter. But before we dive into the main settings of Alfred, let's go ahead into the appearances tab and select the one that we wanna use. Personally, I go with the frosty teal because it adds more contrast than the standard dark and light themes and well, I just like it. This is personal preference though, so pick the one that you want and roll with it. Now, if you're a minimalist or you just want your Alfred search bar to look cleaner, you can click on options down in the bottom left here and check hide hat on Alfred window so that when you type command space to launch it, you'll see that the Alfred logo is no longer there. You can clean things up even more by checking hide menu bar icon to remove the logo from your menu bar. Now, if we come over to the show Alfred on drop down here, I set this to mouse screen because with having multiple monitors, I want Alfred to pop up on the screen I'm actively using. So it's just a quick movement of the mouse to get to it. Let's come over to the features tab and everything inside of the default results tab is open with the basic command space shortcut. I purposely leave all of these except for contacts unchecked because I wanna be able to use the command space space shortcut to navigate through my files and folders. And the reason I leave contacts checked is because if you use Apple contacts like I do, you can really quickly find the name of any of your contacts by typing command space followed by a name, which I'll type dad here. And if I hit enter though, his entire contact card will pop up. 
Again, I purposely leave all of the other ones unchecked because if we come down here into file search, this is where we can set up the Alfred preferences for how it searches internally on your Mac for files and folders by typing command space space. And if we take a look at the don't show section here, you see that I leave the default settings so I don't see emails, contacts, calendar, and everything else here. I actually also check images and music to hide those from file searches as well. Now let's come over to the web search tab. And this is where all of your web search keywords are housed that you can type before your search to let Alfred know exactly how you wanna conduct the search. For example, if I type Google and something that I wanna search, it'll open the default browser and perform that search on Google. Although if you use some of these web searches often, you can shorten them like I did for YouTube here by simply double clicking and renaming it to whatever you'd like. Now, along with changing YouTube to YT, I also shortened Google to just G to make searching the web a lot easier and Amazon to A because I admittedly spend way more than I should on Amazon and practically have packages showing up on my doorstep every day at this point. A little off topic, but if you like free money and credit card hacking as much as I do, and you don't have the Amazon credit card already, I cannot recommend it enough. There's zero annual fee, and you get an unbeatable 5% cash back on everything you buy through Amazon and at Whole Foods. Now, I did include a referral link in the description below the video that you can use to get a $150 Amazon gift card after you're approved, and the approval process is immediate. So if that interests you, go ahead, click that link to get yourself the Amazon credit card, the $150 gift card, and 5% cash back on everything through Amazon and Whole Foods. With that being said, let's get back on track and come down here into the systems tab. Within here, the only thing I do is I uncheck the volume toggles because I like to keep it simple and just use my keyboard to control the volume. Now, if you have the power pack license, which like I said, I'll be giving away five of them in this video, you'll have access to features and workflows that are honestly so good. Once you start using, you'll never be able to live without. First up is one that I use dozens of times a day and an absolute must have called clipboard history, which is a clipboard manager that retains an organized history of the text, links, images, files, and anything else you can think of to copy that you might need access to again. This feature saves a boatload of time from having to go back and forth between windows to copy and paste things one by one as you can copy multiple things at once for later use. You can type to set a keyboard shortcut for it, specify how long you want copied items to stay inside of it, and even set it up for multiple devices. For example, let's say that I wanna copy this from my computer, then go to my phone to copy this, then go back to my computer and with the clipboard manager, I could really easily paste both. And next up is temporary email, which is another must have because we've all come across a situation where you need to input your email address to download a free course guide or any other resource you can think of from a website. The problem with this is that the owner of the website typically adds your email address to an email drip campaign, bombarding your personal inbox with emails and upsells that you then need to go in and manually unsubscribe from. With temporary email, this is no longer a problem though, as it generates a fake email address you can use to get past the signup wall without needing to serve your personal email address up on a platter for those marketing drip campaigns. So to use this, just type command space to launch Alfred, then type TMP and hit enter. You'll see the browser open a new tab with an inbox that's waiting for whatever it is that you just downloaded to be received. And once it comes through, you can read the email entirely, download anything attached to it, like the resource, or even forward the entire email to your personal inbox. Now, whether you're a minimalist like me who just likes a clean desktop or someone who just wants to hide embarrassing folders from your boss when you're in Zoom calls for work, this one's for you and it's called Toggle Desktop Icons. Using this one's really simple, just launch Alfred, type TDI and hit enter, and it'll hide all of the files and folders on your desktop. And then to see them again, just launch Alfred and repeat the same process. Although if you watched my previous video on the top 10 apps for Mac users, you'll know that this is really similar in functionality to the Hit Me app. Although instead of needing to download multiple apps, you can just do all of this inside of Alfred. Next up is one that everyone needs and that's a password manager. Now, Alfred does have one built in that's great for the everyday user called 1Password, which for the longest time was easily my most used feature. And I'll explain why it isn't anymore in just a bit. But for the average user, this is an extremely useful feature because it houses all of your personal login information. As you can see, if I type 1P, it shows all of my saved usernames and passwords. If you need to use one of these, you can type to find the one you want, 
press enter, and Alfred will launch the browser, taking you straight to the website with your login information automatically added. Like I said, this was easily my most used feature for the longest time, but if you own or operate a business like I do, no matter if it's a smaller mom and pop shop or a Fortune 500 enterprise, you'll need a password manager that offers a much more comprehensive suite of features like NordPass Business, the sponsor of today's video. NordPass provides exceptional password management solutions with industry-leading security, not only on an individual basis, but company wide as well. So you can say goodbye to the risk of malicious attacks caused by weak passwords during employee onboarding, as you can establish company-wide password policies, ensuring that those new hires don't put your entire organization at risk by using the same diehard Swifty password across all their accounts. NordPass even takes it a step further by automatically generating strong and unique passwords that can be autofilled across all devices, eliminating the security threat of post-it notes with sensitive information scattered across work monitors throughout the office. NordPass isn't just a password manager though. It's a comprehensive solution that stores other confidential information like office alarm codes and Wi-Fi passwords, login details for third-party softwares, and even credit card payment information. Team-specific unified vaults are perfect for storing team assets that can be updated as needed and securely shared with team members at the click of a button instead of sending confidential information via text or email. You can see NordPass Business in action for yourself now and get a free three-month trial with the code Chris Tomchak by clicking the link in the description below. For my productivity enthusiasts out there, there's a built-in Pomodoro timer called Yak. To use this, launch Alfred and type Yak, which will start the 25-minute Pomodoro timer and set off a notification once the time is up. Yak is configurable to any amount of time that you want, but since 25 minutes is kind of the tried and true time frame for the Pomodoro technique, you can set custom timers with an Alfred by using Timer. So to use this, just launch Alfred and type timer, followed by a specified time frame like 10M, which stands for 10 minutes. And this will start a 10 minute timer that'll also ping a notification once the timer's up. So as you can see, there are a ton of useful workflows and on top of the ones we already covered, you can also create your own custom workflows, which if we dove into that, this video would be over an hour long and neither of us want that. If you are interested though, I recommend checking out more of the popular workflows that others have built already on the Alfred website, which I linked in the description below the video. So there you have it. From download and setup to exploring a lot of the free and paid features, I hope you got some insight into how you can best leverage Alfred to supercharge your productivity. Before signing off though, I do wanna let you know that I read every comment and notice several recommendations on past videos for using Raycast over Alfred. So I spent some time familiarizing myself with it and can completely agree that it's another extremely powerful app. Although in my opinion, productivity is more about maximizing efficiency within your own systems and processes and less about the app or platform used to do it. Both apps have learning curves, and just like everything else in life, it's really easy to get caught up in searching for the perfect solution instead of optimizing the things you already have in place. So even though we covered a lot in this video to help dampen the learning curve for Alfred, I encourage you to pick one and invest the time mastering it so using the features becomes second nature. With that being said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.